All right. What's going on, family? I hope you're well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, today, I'm actually going to be reading a segment of my book, Rich and Righteous. Uh, this book has blessed so many people. Thousands and thousands of copies have been sold. It was divinely downloaded through me. Um, it's called Rich and Righteous, Spiritual Secrets to Mastering Money, Manifestation, and Your Mind. And um, and uh, I'm really excited about getting it out, this consciousness out uh, into the world more. Um, I don't know if you know, but my purpose on this earth is to make the righteous rich. It's to make the righteous rich. You know, we live in a world right now where people who have unrighteous motives um have more money and money is just stored energy, right? It is an inert spiritual substance that we can use to bring heaven on earth. And for whatever reason, um, in part because of religious dogma and things of that nature, um, people who have good hearts and uh, want to do right, want to do more good in the world, have had a struggle with this thing called money. And uh, I've been able to hold both spaces where I've been able to preserve uh, who I am and my pureness and my heart, as well as manage and make and multiply money at the same time. And it's a very fine line to walk. And uh, that's why I was inspired to write this book. This is no, <laughs> this is no small <laughs> book. <laughs> this, uh, this is no small book. And these are my thoughts about money and how the righteous can become rich. And so um, I may uh, start reading a chapter uh, each day. They're not really chapters. They're more like devotionals. There are like 66 of them in here. And um, and so today I'm just going to start off with the introduction and see how it goes. And if, if this resonates with everybody, then I, I may continue. So uh, blessings, blessings. Good to see you all. Good to see you all. All right. So with that, um, I'm going to get the introduction. If you haven't already got the book, you can go to moneyandmanifestation.com. You can go to moneyandmanifestation.com to get the book. Um, and when you do that, there are um, when you do that, um, you get five copies. And the reason why you get five copies is because uh, I want to immediately stimulate your personal economy and put you in a state of giving. So when you get five copies, you get one for yourself, of course, but then you're supposed to give it to four other people. And what that'll do by putting you in a state of giving as you get given it give and you shall receive, right? And so when you give, it actually uh, stimulates your personal economy. Though it's not money, this book is actually more valuable than money, right? So you're giving something to others that you care about that is more valuable than money, which is the knowledge of how to make, manage, and multiply money. So um, if you are interested in getting the book, you don't have to. I'm going to be reading it to you right now. But if you're interested in getting the book, um, it is here. And the book is $100. I'm going to just let you know that up front. The book is a hundred dollars. Why is it a hundred dollars? Um, because uh, the thought, energy, and the time that I put into this, this is not some just ten dollar book. And this book is going to make you in your life way more than a hundred dollars. This book is going to make you in your life way more than a hundred dollars. And so, um, yeah, this is the value that I believe it is. And if that is too um, too high for your consciousness to grasp because of what you paid for books before, how many textbooks did you buy in college? Um, that haven't served you at all, that you paid hundreds of dollars for, right? Um, so this is this is it. You got to know the difference between expensive and expansive. Um, a lot of books you may have on your bookshelf have been expensive. They've cost you. They haven't done anything for you. Whereas um, this book is expansive. It's going to multiply uh, whatever you currently know and whatever you're currently doing. So uh, with that, I'm going to read the introduction today. And like I said, if this reading goes well and you all love this space, then what I'll do is I'll likely just hop on here probably on weekdays or a couple of days a week and just read uh, read a chapter. And again, these are not uh, long chapters. Um, these are more like devotionals, um, a few pages. All right. So today we're going to start off with the introduction. We're going to start off with the introduction today. And uh, I hope that this reading blesses you. Okay. Introduction. Why I'm writing this book right now. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people and they all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women 
and children, Matthew 14, 19 through 21. So every every section starts off with the scripture from the Bible. Um, I know some people have a negative relationship with the Bible. And what I really encourage you to do um, is not throw out the Bible with the baptism water. I know many of you uh, have left uh, the church um, uh, due to the religious dogma and some of the practices there <laughs> and some of the inconsistencies and unrighteousness. Um, but the Bible uh, has extreme wisdom. And I want you to know that the Bible is not a Christian book. It is not even a religious book. OK, it's not a Christian book or a religious book. Religions have uh, taken ownership of it and religions use it heavily to justify who they are and what they do. Um, but that book transcends religion. All right. So um, I start off with a, a scripture. I've been blessed to be able to decode the Bible and be able to um, draw out the life wisdom that is in that book. And um, and so uh, I use that as inspiration for each um, devotion here. OK, so with that. When the coronavirus first uh, shook the world and the economy started uh, feeling the effects, I knew the fear of the unknown would likely have to uh, have a lot of people slip into a scarcity mindset. We saw it play out with a frivolous item like toilet paper, and I knew it was bound to happen with our finances. I immediately took action with this foresight and taught an abundance mindset class every Sunday afternoon online called the Financial Church. After six months of teaching hundreds of people and creating a safe haven for my community, I felt called to place the divine downloads that I was receiving and sharing into something tangible. Luke 12, 12 says the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say at the moment when you need them. And that's precisely what occurred. I was divinely inspired to write a book to unify faith and finance so that we could all have life and have it more abundantly. Being obedient to that call on my heart birthed the book you hold in your hand right now. But more importantly than just getting it in your hands, my prayer is that it roots deeply in your head and your heart. The scarcity mindset can affect anyone, whether they are rich or poor. Sometimes those with money tend to love it because they feel it is scarce and fear scarcity. We tend to value things more that appear to be scarce or in low supply. But scarcity is a mindset, whereas money is a manifestation. You can have money and still live in scarce city. As Mark 12, 44 says, they all gave out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty, but in everything, all she had to live on. All evil and ego come out of the belief in scarcity, though the truth is, is that we live in an abundant world. Anytime you get a scar from being hurt, you get scared and scared feelings lead to scarcity thinking. Scarcity comes from four beliefs. OK, we are scared that there isn't enough. We are scared we won't have enough. We are scared that we aren't enough or we are scared that God isn't enough. OK, I'll repeat those. Scarcity comes from four beliefs that there isn't enough. We won't have enough that we aren't enough and that God is not enough. If you truly believe that and this is me just taking an aside, if you truly believe that God is all knowing, all being and all having right and omniscient and omnipotent then you would have to believe in scarcity. If you know that you're a child of God and you know that your mother, father, God, that's what I choose to call it. Your mother, father, God um, has access to all and is the creator of all, then there would be no belief in scarcity. But when we don't believe in God's power in that way, um, we can slip into scarcity. Okay. Moving on to the book again. The only things that are truly scarce in this world are land and time due to the body. But even then, the internet offers an infinite landscape of non-physical digital real estate, and you can transcend the body if you make an impact and leave a legacy that lives beyond you. Okay. Scarcity, and the way I uh, the way I spell it is, the way I spell it is, scare hyphen city, scare hyphen city, is a city within our minds where thoughts dwell and beget fear, doubt worried and greed okay scarcity is a city it's a place in our minds where thoughts dwell and beget fear doubt worry and greed which are emotions right those emotions lead to hoarding stealing killing comparing and coveting which are actions okay and coveting which are actions all right so these are emotions and those emotions lead to actions. Remember our being leads to our doing, which leads to our having, okay? 
Now those actions lead to lack. These are the results. These are the, what we have as a result of those emotions, which is our state of being, and then which leads to our doing, and this is our having. Those, those actions lead to lack, loss, death, and war, which are experiences. This is what we have in our life as a result of those emotions, which lead to those actions, which leads to these experiences, okay? Can you see how our beliefs create perspectives or paradigms that create emotions that result in our actions, which create our experience? This is a cycle, Is this is the cycle of being, doing, and having, all right? Very few animals worry, listen to this, very few animals worry about being provided for by God like humans. Just think about all the animals on the earth that are not domesticated. Even the ones that are domesticated, some of them live a better life than human beings, which is crazy, right? So very few animals worry about being provided for by God like humans. If they are, it is because our at most fear, our collective fear-based consciousness has disrupted the harmony of their ecosystems. This is why Jesus said in Matthew 6, 26 through 34, Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor get, gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, right, can add one cubit unto his nature? So this is where thought comes in, right? This is Jesus, the metaphysician, going into how your thoughts are affecting your life, right? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Therefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Okay, this is faith, belief. Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Okay. For your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. <clears throat> and one of my favorite scriptures in the entire Bible is, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay. So the reason that scripture is one of my favorites is because it literally gives you a sequence for success, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. But what happens is, is that we tend to try to seek the things that we desire in life. And then we say, once we have enough money, once we're doing this, and once this box is checked off, then I'm going to give back. Then I'm going to serve God. And it's actually the opposite. It's actually you walking in your God-given purpose, right? And that purpose being pure and righteous. And if you do so, what tends to happen, not what tends to happen, it's almost a law, it is a law, is that all the things that you desire shall be added unto you. So as you know, I'm a, a real estate investor. This is how I manifest in the material world. But these are the this this these are the thoughts um, and the thinking that allow me to manifest in the material world in the way that I do, right? Bringing heaven, my mental experience of life onto earth, which is my material experience of life. And listen to me very carefully. The reason I'm uh, the reason I'm able to have the home that I have, my dream home, right? The reason I'm able to have my dream home family is because I'm building it right now. The reason I'm able to have it is because I provide quality, affordable housing for over 70 people. I'm building my dream home right now, okay? And the reason I'm able to have that and have it free and clear, not owing any bank, is because I provide quality, affordable housing to 70 people people first. I actually helped other people get the thing that I wanted. And as a result, guess what? I get what I want. The things that I desire shall be added unto me. See, this is where vision boards come in. And we're going to talk about this. Um, we're going to talk about this in a, in a later chapter. Um, vision boards, when you think about your vision board, vision boards are selfish. Your vision board has all the things that you want on it. The car that you want, the house that you want, the clothes you want, the trips you want, the spouse that you want, it has what you want on it. But what I found the secret to success is, is not selfishly looking at a vision board of the things that I want. Instead, it is serving others to help them get what they want. And if I help another enough people get what they want, then what tends to happen for me? I get everything that I desire. 
If I help enough people get what they want, I get everything that I desire. So instead of looking at your vision board, and oftentimes we're looking at it from a uh, we're looking at it from an energy of absence. Oh, I don't have that man. I don't have that woman. I don't have that car. I don't have that house. Sometimes your vision board is actually a reminder to you that you don't have it. And this is why it's not manifesting in your life. You have to, uh, if you do have one, you have to, the purpose of it is to act as if, right? That it is present in your life right here and right now, right? So that's really, really key. So moving on to uh, um, verse 34, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. All right. So this is really about worry. And if you read uh, the Gospels, you'll find that Jesus is hammering on us about worry, worrying about some future that is not yet here because the kingdom of heaven is actually in your midst. It is here and now. See, religion has convinced many of us that um, that. Life after death is better than life here on earth. That's part of the trickery that I'll have mine once I die. No, if you read the Lord's Prayer, we are supposed to bring heaven on earth. That is our homework. That is our assignment to bring heaven on earth here and now. Because the kingdom is in our midst. If I ask you what time is it, if I ask you what time it is, what will always be the right answer? The right answer will always be now. If I ask you where you are, what will always be the right answer? The right answer will always be here. So guess what? There is no time. Time is man-made. We are on a time continuum of here and now, here and now, here and now. Here and now, here and now, here and now. That's, that's what it is. And so this is why it's so important to stay present. Shame carries us into the past. Unforgiveness carries us into the past. Worry carries us into the future. It has us fearing about things that have not occurred, right? The question is, how do you feel right now? Where are you right now? What time is it right now? And if you just come back to the present moment, you'll realize you're okay. You know how you know you're okay? Because you're still breathing. You're still breathing. And if you're still breathing, that means that God is not done with you. It means that you still have a purpose here. There's an assignment for you to still complete here on earth. OK, and so moving forward, animals rely on their God given ecosystem to live. In addition to our ecosystem, humans have created an additional layer called the economic system. See, animals don't have an economic system. So we created that extra layer, whereas bees might carry, ex carry and exchange pollen throughout their ecosystem. We carry and exchange paper money throughout our economy. Nonetheless, both are substances that can help to sustain life and perpetuate the ecosystem or economy. Take no thought in verse 34 translates as do not worry or don't be anxious. Scarcity is a waste of thought energy. Worry, anxiety, doubt, fear, and uncertainty drain you emotionally. Your mind is reaching back to an undesirable moment and emotion in the past, projecting that moment into the future, which causes an undesirable emotion in the present. I'm going to read that again, y'all. When you have worry, your mind is reaching back to an undesirable moment or emotion in the past. It is then projecting that moment into the future, which then causes an undesirable emotion in the present. <laughs> wow. These were divine downloads. When I read this, sometimes I can't believe that it came through me. It's kind of like uh, when uh, women look at uh, their child, right? And they're like, that thing came through me? When I I can't believe this came through me. I was just open and present and I was just being obedient. And um, these were divine downloads. And when I read it, sometimes I can't. Uh, it's hard for me to believe that I, I read it. And every time I read it, um, I read it over and over and over again. Every time I read it, I get new insights from things that I wrote. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so usually the moment is the worst case scenario. If you ever project into the future, be intentional. Use the same thought energy you would use to imagine a worst case scenario to envision a best case scenario instead. All right. The only limits to best case scenario thinking are your own limiting beliefs. The own, I'll repeat that. The only limits to best case scenario thinking are your own limiting beliefs. Imagine the highest high, not the lowest low, the greatest good for all, not just the greatest good for you. 
Abundance is the truth. God is the infinite source of supply. And when you move in that knowing, not just believing, scarcity is no longer a part of your experience. Ooh. Uh, yeah, we got a few more pages, but I hope y'all are enjoying this. <laughs> I am. Rich and righteous. We're just in the introduction. <laughs> All right. Yes, we're reading Rich and Righteous. Um, uh, in case you don't know, we're reading Rich and Righteous, which is my book. Um, and uh, I just was inspired today to read um, uh, one of the sections. There's 66 in here. And um, if this goes well, I will continue to like read um, a few times a week and just jump on here and read a, a chapter for you. And the chapters are only like, you know, five, uh, five pages or so. OK, so I'll keep on going. Rich and Righteous. Spiritual Secrets to Mastering Money, Manifestation, and Your Mind explores the intersection between faith and finance. If you picked up this book, you either believe that abundance is your birthright regardless of your current financial situation, or you simply have reached a point of surrender and are willing to try a new approach. In either case, get ready to delve into financial spirituality. This is what I call this belief system, okay? It is called financial spirituality, all right? And learn what the creator teaches about creating heaven on earth and manifesting money and the life that you desire. Throughout the Bible, abundance is in the form of various manifestations and miracles, such as land, family, bread, fish, wine, temples, tabernacles, treasures, victories, escapes, and money. Okay, Abundance is all throughout the Bible, family. And rich and righteous will uncover the universal laws of money and the wealth hidden in the Bible and will bless you regardless of your religious beliefs. Disclaimer. This is a disclaimer. I am not here to teach you what to think. This is key. And I need everybody to know this. I am not here to teach you what to think. My intention is to have you become more conscious of what you believe and how you think. Okay. I'm not here to teach you what to think. That's called indoctrination and programming. There's already too much of that. Many of you have programs and scripts that you uh, have been embedding in you since a very young age about money that are crippling you right here and right now. I'm not here to program you or to teach you how to think. I want you to become more conscious of what you actually believe and think and how you think and how that is affecting your life. Okay. So I want you to literally be a fly on the wall observing your own life. I want you to be a fly on the wall or a spirit observing your life and how, how you're moving. But sometimes we're so caught up in this material experience and in this body consciousness that we can't see, we can't see ourselves and how we are actually the root of our own problems. Our thinking and our programming and our wiring is the root of our own problems. And so when we can't see that, what do we do? We blame other people outside of ourselves. We blame institutions outside of ourselves for why we aren't having the life that we desire. But if you could just see yourself, know thyself you would see that you have all the power and control to change who you are being, which then changes what you do, which then changes what you have. Okay. The ability to observe yourself from a God's eye view. How does God see you? How does God see you? I don't care how you see you. I don't care how your spouse sees you. I don't care how your boss sees you. I don't care how your parents see you. I don't care how society sees you. How does God see you? And if you could only see yourself in the way that God sees you, your life would change. The ability to observe yourself from a God's eye view is how you see your role in creating the life you are living. And this level of consciousness empowers you to be the change you want to see in your world. We are all living in parallel universes. And you are the center of your universe, and I'm the center of mine. I know you feel you're unselfish, but guess what? You're at the center of your own universe. You think about you first. And we're all living in parallel universes, but we can have different experiences. Like two people could be sitting next to each other in a movie theater, right? They're literally in the same physical space, but they're having different experiences of the same movie. One person thinks that the movie is great and they're laughing out loud and the other person hates the movie, right? How is that so? They're in the same physical space, seeing the exact same images scroll across the screen just very quickly, which then looks like a motion picture, right? But they're having two completely different experiences. That's what's happening for all of us right now. 
And if the person who hates the movie actually could understand why the person who loves the movie loves it, they may have a more joyful experience of that movie. Same thing at work. You see two people, same job title, same company, same educational pedigree, same skill sets. One person loves it. The other person hates it. They're in the same physical space having a pretty identical experience or an outward experience, but inwardly, they're having completely different experiences. How is that the case? Why is one having a more joyful experience and one having a more miserable experience? It's what's happening between the most important block in the world, between your two temples. You know, in black communities, there are churches on every corner, right? Churches on every corner in the most poor black communities. But the most important block in the world is between this temple and this temple. Your body is a temple, right? Your body is a temple. Jesus tore down the temples, right? He said, I'll tear down this temple in three days and rebuild it. Wasn't talking about physical temple, right? Because God dwelleth in temples that are not made by the hands of man. God does not dwell in some building, family. God dwells in you. God was here before any church was built in you. Your body is a temple. All right. <laughs> so faith operates. <laughs> Yo, you're going to be preaching out here. Okay, we got one, two, three, four, four and a half pages. All right. I'm going to keep it pushing. Faith operates in tangible, invisible, immaterial. Faith operates in the intangible, invisible, immaterial realm of heaven, which is our mental experience of life. Okay, heaven is our mental experience of life. They told you that heaven was someplace you go to after you die, if you've been baptized, right? Try this on. You do not have to agree with it. I'm not trying to teach you how to think. This is what has worked for me and it allowed me to manifest at the level that I've been able to manifest. Faith operate, heaven is your mental experience of life. And we are here to bring heaven on earth. So you're here to bring the thoughts, all these amazing thoughts, ideas, and things that come from your imagination. You know, it says we are made in God's image. What if that actually, what if the true translation was we, you were made in God's imagination? Why would that be true? As above, so below. Because how do we create? Everything we create comes from where? Our image or imagination. So if we are children of God and we create like our mother, father, God, then guess what? God created us. Because if we're made in God's image, then we, God would be some big human being in the sky. And that's how um, old Artists painted God as some big human being in the sky. And therefore, we think that there is this white Jesus or there's this big physical figure in the sky that's looking over us. No, we know that that's not true. Right. There's nobody waiting at pearly gates for us that's going to check off their naughty or nice list. Right. God is spirit. God is spirit. And so we are made in God's imagination. So faith operates in the intangible, invisible, immaterial realm of heaven, which is our mental experience of life. In contrast, finance functions in earth's tangible, visible, material realm and represents our material experience of life. OK, so I'm going to repeat that. Heaven is our mental experience of life. And earth is our material experience of life. This is the spiritual. <laughs> this is the um, this is the material, intangible. Okay. Are y'all getting this? Are y'all getting this? All right, cool. Yeah, I said somebody said I'm getting this book. If you want to get the book, it's at moneyandmanifestation.com. Moneyandmanifestation.com. Okay. Um, like I said before, you get five copies. And the reason I give you five copies is because the goal is to immediately put stimulate your personal economy by putting you in a state of giving. So you'll keep one for yourself and you'll give out the other four to other people. This book is not meant to be read alone. You're supposed to have conversations about it so that you can break through the financial paradigm, the, the money mindset um, paradigms that have been limiting you. OK, <clears throat> moving forward. As we will explore later, currency or current C, I spell it current. Uh, current hyphen C. OK, current. I, I do a lot of wordplay in the book. OK, I love the English language and how um, uh, etymology. So current C or what you actually currently see is our attempt to see energetic currents by making them tangible. OK, there are currents flowing around you right now. 
there's radio waves. Even if you're not in a car, there's radio waves flowing by, by you right now. And if you were in the car, you could actually tune in to that radio wave. So you have to understand that there are invisible wave patterns and functions flowing around you right now in this moment. And to the extent that you're able to tap in to the ones that you desire, then act, that becomes your material reality. When you tap into the right radio station, because, you know, when you're switching the dial, there's moments in there where nothing is manifesting. You don't you can't hear anything except static. Right. But when you find the right. Dial, then all of a sudden you hear something and something starts coming through clearly to you. The same thing happens not only on wavelengths, but on material form. Nothing in this world is actually physical. And, and actually, I'll go into that right now. Money serves as a middleman between the spiritual and material realms. We have given so much focus to our mental ex material experience when the, immat the immaterial actually makes up most of our lives. Listen to this, y'all. We have given so much focus to our material experience when the immaterial actually makes up most of our lives. Listen to this statistic, y'all. This is not even a statistic. It's not a stat. It's not from a survey. It's It's science. For example, a hydrogen atom is about 99.9999999999996% empty space. A hydrogen atom is 99.9999999996% empty space. Okay? Put another way, if a hydrogen atom were the size of Earth, the proton at its center would be about 200 meters, right? Which is 656 feet or about two 100 yard football fields across, okay? That's it. If a hydrogen atom was the size of Earth, the proton would only be two football fields. Just, just sit with that. I, close your eyes and sit with that. If hydrogen were the size of Earth, the proton, right, which has material form, would only be two football fields in the context of all of Earth. <laughs> the mass of the proton is minuscule in comparison to the empty void, right? And where did God create from in Genesis? This formless and empty space from Genesis 1-2 is where all creation comes from. Just like a blank page calls a writer to write, or a blank dry erase board causes an entrepreneur to think. Creation comes from the void, from the formless. You get an empty box of Legos as a kid, and what do you do? You build something from that formlessness. You get some Play-Doh as a kid, and what do you do? You build something, and you shape it into something from the formlessness. Okay, This unseen substance that we live and move and have our being which is in for Acts 17, 28. And that is in, inside of us is God. This unseen substance that we live and move and have our being in and that is inside of us is God. God is in the gaps. As Jesus said in John 14, 11, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. God is this etheric, spiritual substance that is in and around all things. We are in God and God is in us to the degree in which we understand the invisible, we will be able to shape the visible. To the degree that we understand the invisible, we will be able to shape the visible. Everything comes from the invisible family. But if you are too caught up in your body consciousness, then guess what? You will not, you will not be able to, uh, you're so caught up in the material and the physical, you can't see the invisible that is actually shaping reality, right? Even when you think about it in this whole conversation about the uh, the Jewish people, okay? They're not Jews, they're Jewish people, right? And you hear the language around Illuminati. These are, it's a, it's a narrative, and I don't know if I believe it or not. It's a narrative about an invisible group of people shaping our reality, okay? Unfortunately, society has divided faith, evidence of the things seen, and finance into two separate worlds. And because of this, most people's spirits are divided between the two. 
We are not meant to be divided. As Matthew 12, 25 says, a house divided against itself cannot stand. A house divided against itself cannot stand. What does that mean? Okay. A lot of people only apply that to the material experience of life and they apply that to what? They apply it to what? They apply it to marriage. Oh, a house divided against itself can't stand. A uh, husband and a wife or whoever, they can't stand. I want you to apply that to your mind, family. If your mind is divided against itself, it cannot stand. A mind divided against itself cannot stand, okay? You will be, uh, your, um, and then Matthew 6.10 adds, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, which means bringing the two into one and that we are called to bring heaven on earth. Tr through this book, my goal is to guide you to make the two one using the concept of financial spirituality. Okay. When your mind is divided, it's called cognitive dissonance. There's a term for it. Okay. That is your house up here, your temple divided against itself. You know, you're supposed to be walking in your God given purpose, but you're still working on the corporate plantation. You know, you're supposed to forgive, but you're still holding on to a spirit of unforgiveness. Right. You know, you're supposed to be eating healthy in this way, but you still want that cheeseburger. <laughs> right. That's a house divided against itself. It cannot stand, okay? Like gravity, universal law works for everyone without judgment, whether you are aware that they exist or how they work or not. To leverage these universal laws, it would be in your best interest to understand how they work. Mastering these laws requires you to know how money, manifestation, and the mind form a trinity that will allow you to experience heaven on earth. And this book will help you do just that. By becoming more aligned with God, no matter how you identify or name God for yourself, this is not uh, this is not about religion. OK, yes, I reference scripture. Right. The Bible uh, has truth that transcends religion. OK, many religions use the Bible, but uh, the Bible is not a religious book. OK. In fact, I don't even know. If, do you see one? Do you see the name of any religion in the Bible? Do you see the name of any religion in the Bible? I don't. I don't. Okay. You come to realize that money is a natural byproduct of the alignment of that alignment when you fully understand what it is, how it works, and how to use it. All right. We got uh, two and a half more pages, y'all. <clears throat> two and a half more pages. All right. Again, if you're joining us, I see a lot more people coming in. This is beautiful. Um, I just was inspired to do this this morning. Um, I wrote this book uh, almost two years ago now. And um, and I know now is the time, especially as we go into this quote unquote recession. I don't believe in the word recession. I don't believe in recession. I believe in abundance. I believe there's always opportunity. But I know as the collective consciousness moves into this idea of recession, just like when I wrote this as we were going into COVID, um, uh, it's time for this wisdom to come forth. All right. So continuing forward, I will uh, I will not be teaching you strategies to manipulate money. A lot of these online gurus, these financial literacy gurus, they're teaching you strategies to manipulate money. Go get some business credit, go run it up, go buy what you want and then file bankruptcy or close the LLC. That's unrighteous behavior. There is a company that had to that money came from somewhere and you're literally getting over on somebody. I will not be teaching you how to manipulate money here. OK, we are going about this righteously. Right. The, uh, the pursuit of wealth at all costs is risky because endlessly seeking material wealth can cause you to go against the essence of who you truly are, because going against yourself depletes your spiritual wealth. Fortunately, there is another way to wealth that creates a win win situation for everyone based on reciprocity, righteousness and balance giving and receiving. By righteousness, I mean anyone who is in alignment with God and merely seeking to do more good and demonstrate more God in the world. How many of you would do more good with more money? How many of you would do more good with more money? All of you. That's how I know that you're righteous. And since I know that you would do more good with more money, guess what I want for you? I want you to have more money at your fingertips. Now we're gonna get into why it's not about just having money because the ultimate goal is to circulate money. 
but I know that you would do more good with more money. So guess what? I want you to have more money at your fingertips to use to bring heaven on earth. It's not about you having more money in a savings account and it just sitting there doing nothing for your own personal security. It's about you having more money so that one, you can walk in your God given purpose without thinking about money, without having to worry about money, and so that you can give in the way that you were created to give. <clears throat> when righteous folks make decisions, they don't just think about how it will affect them, they consider the whole, which is the holiest way to make decisions. And they think in terms of us rather than just me or my immediate family. Our nation's current state is calling on the righteous to become rich. When the righteous can establish a right relationship with money, it will result in an economy that places people over profit. We will have heaven on earth driven by a spiritual based economy that works for the greatest good for all of God's children, regardless of religion. Your investment in this book is a sign that your mind is open and ready to receive, and there's nothing more fruitful than an open mind. I'm not seeking to convince you or convert you to anything. This belief system of financial spirituality has been proven to work for me and many others. I'm simply inviting you to try it on like a pair of shoes and see if it fits you. Allow these thought seeds to penetrate your conscious and subconscious minds and see if they bear good fruit in your life. As Matthew 15, 16 through 17 says, you will know them by their fruits. Every good tree bears good fruit. If your life is bearing bad fruit, then you must revisit the roots, which is your thinking. If your life is bearing bad fruit, you must revisit the roots, which is your thinking. In John, in John 15, 1 through 3, Jesus adds, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. As you can see from the image below, listen very carefully, y'all. I'm going to show you this image. <clears throat> Look at this image. Can you see this? That is the image of a vine of grapes, and that is the image of a neuron. They are identical family. That is the image of a vine. And that is the image of a neuron. They are identical. We know that Jesus only spoke in parables. Jesus was speaking to us using the material to help us understand the spiritual. So now that you've seen that image, the vineyard is a metaphor or metaphysical representation of your mind, and the fruits are the manifestations in your life, whether good or bad. When you begin to see the Bible as a mental book, not just as a literal, not just as a literal or religious book, your eyes will be open wide and you will be able to see more possibilities than you've ever seen before. And as gardeners, we must go through the process of pruning beliefs that diminish our divinity so that we shall not taste death, but instead be full of life. Christ consciousness is the highest, most <clears throat> true understanding of who we are in God and who God is in us. Wealth consciousness is the highest, most true understanding of money, and that is what we will be exploring in this book. However, we cannot put more change in our pockets without changing who we are first. Bars. We cannot put more change in our pockets without changing who we are first. Okay. Last page. Below is an affirmation to prepare you to have the information in this book deeply root in your head, which is your conscious mind, and your heart, which is your subconscious mind, which you will hear me refer to as the heart mind throughout the book. When I'm talking about the mind, I'm talking about the heart mind, the connection between the, the um, conscious mind and the subconscious mind. Okay. So here's the affirmation. And I want you to repeat after me to yourself. I am ready to receive. I am open to receive. The soil of my mind. Okay, let me slow down. I am ready to receive. That is the name of the affirmation. Repeat after me. I am open to receive. I am open to receive. The soil of my mind, the soil of my mind is rich and ready to receive. 
is rich and ready to receive rich thought seeds, rich thought seeds. The more I receive, the more I receive, the more I can give, the more I can give. For I know that every good seed planted, for I know that every good seed planted in me, in me, will reap 100 fold in my life, will reap 100 fold in my life. I know that notes are vibrations. I know that notes are vibrations. And I pray that every note I take, and I pray that every note I take tunes me into the vibration, tunes me into the vibration of wealth consciousness, of wealth consciousness. I know abundance is my birthright. I know abundance is my birthright. And I'm here to claim it. And I'm here to claim it in the heaven of my mind first, in the heaven of my mind first, so that I can also experience it, so that I can also experience it materially on earth, materially on earth. Ashe, Ashe, Amen, Amen, and so it is. Woo! How's everybody feeling? <laughs> That was good, y'all. I'm so glad to see you all here. Um, so, uh, like I said, um, I just got moved. You know, all this recession talk, we're entering a new year. Um, I got a move to, you know, just read from my own book, uh, this divine download that came through me. Um, and uh, so, um, since this went so well, I'm going to likely jump on here um, on occasional weekdays uh, in the morning and read this. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be daily yet. I'm not too sure if it's going to be every other day, um, but uh, I will I will um, just stay tuned. So turn on your notifications, subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, so that you get notified. Um, if I do decide to come up with an actual schedule like a Monday, Wednesday, uh, Friday, um, I'll post it um, on YouTube or on Instagram. But um, I hope that this introduction alone blessed you. Um, there's a lot of gems in that. If you do not have the book and you want to follow along. Uh, as we read, um, uh, you can go to moneyandmanifestation.com. That's moneyandmanifestation.com. Uh, I've pinned that uh, on social media and you can get the book. Now, I'm, I'm here to let you know in advance, the book is $100. The book is $100. That's why you see it up here. Okay. But when you buy the book, you get five copies. You get one copy for you and you get four copies to give to others. The purpose of this is to stimulate your personal economy. And the way you stimulate your personal economy is to give first. Give and ye shall receive. And so this is more valuable than money. This book is going to make you more than $100. Okay. But I'm basically giving it to you for $20 each so that you can stimulate not only your personal economy, but also the economies of the people that are around you. Right. So again, that's at moneyandmanifestation.com. Um, whether you buy it or not, that's uh, it's all good. I'm still going to be here sharing this journey with you, doing this reading. Um, but if you want it in your hands so that you can follow along, then go ahead and get that. So again, turn on your notifications. Um, uh, follow me on social media so that you know when I'm going to um, read again. This was just I just woke up and God said, go read. Go read publicly. So here I am reading publicly. Um, the next section is called the old way, which we call financial literacy. I know we're having this movement of financial literacy right now, um, but that's the, actually the old way. And I'm going to take you to the new way, which is financial spirituality. Um, and uh, we are going to go through the 10 commandments of money during this reading process. Um, and uh, so we're going to go through. <laughs> here's the table of consciousness. Here's a table of consciousness. So we're going to go through the introduction. What is money? Abundance is your birthright. We're going to go through how to measure money, how to think about money, how to feel about money, how to speak about money, how to ask about money, how to hold money, how to use it, how to use money, how to manifest money. Then we're going to go to how to attract money and how to enjoy money. Um, and uh, this book is 400 and uh, 400 and uh, a lot of pages, 405 pages. Um, so if you are not a sit down and read physical copy person, um, I'll be reading through it for you here with um, some asides and some additions and commentary as I go. All right. So I appreciate you. Uh, love you. Wish you the best. I hope that this reading blessed you. And I look forward to going on this journey with you. Um, we don't believe in recessions over here. Recessions mean sell. 
right? The reason I even can come up with that thought that a recession means a sale. We get excited about sales on Black Friday when liabilities are on sale. But when it comes to assets going on sale, we get fearful. Recession means sale. And so sale means opportunity to get something at discount. And so we should be excited. But if you have an association of recession and fear, then you're going to freeze instead of get free during this time. All right. So with that, uh, I love you. I wish you the best on your journey. I'm here to make the righteous rich. And if you identify as somebody who is righteous, somebody who wants to do good by others and do good in your own life, um, then uh, I consider you a brother and sister. And uh, I would love to help you um, have as much money circulate into your life as humanly possible. All right. Have a good one, everybody. I will talk to you soon again. The URL to get the book, five copies, is at moneyandmanifestation.com. Much love, y'all. Peace.